Hey everyone, Eric with Rockin' HTV, session number 38. Tonight we are going to continue a project I started on Sunday. Did a little impromptu video on a Louisville four-door uh, build that I'm doing just for the fun of it. And I'm uh, going to continue that on. And then we're going to do some open Q&A. You can ask me anything about business, about uh, models, or maybe you want to see something. Uh, there is no rules on that. You can ask me anything. And uh, also we'll have my laptop for um, um, links, you know, you want to see something, where do you do this, where do you do that. Um, I can go ahead and show you some things there, and that's going to be cool. So we're going to say hi to everyone in the house. We have Austin there. Hello, Austin. Kent is in. Vaughn is back. And Dylan, hello, guys. How are you? Uh, let me see here. I saw about all I see right now at the moment. So uh, just going to let the house get warmed up and get some folks in the room. And we're going to refresh my computer so we can see what's going on here. That'll be good. There we go. And just about there we are. All right. Perfect. Okay. And Nathan, there he is. Nice to see you, Nathan. Um, Dylan says, hi, Eric. Love these four-door conversions you're doing. Very unique. Well, thank you. I, I kind of get off on them. I don't know. I just like them. Uh, I don't keep very many of them, but I like making them anyway. Uh, good fun. And we have Mark in the house. And hi to you, Vaughn. Thanks for saying hello. Good to see everybody. Hope you're all uh, doing well. I don't know about you, but fall has struck in Kansas. Um, in my rain gauges, two and a half inches of rain, which is brilliant because we've been super dry. My, uh, my lawn has tiger crap for dirt. It's really dense, thick clay. And uh, it shrinks away from the house. I mean, if you lose, don't drop any tools or anything. You're going to lose it in the cracks in the lawn. So luckily, hopefully, we'll get some of those filled in. That'll be great. And it is pretty darn cool today. I, you'll notice I have my jacket on finally. So um, Alan is in the house. Hello, Alan Ward is here. Corey is here. Welcome, guys. Good to see you all. Thank you for being here. we got about four more minutes here. And... Um, um, just getting a few more people around. Nathan says, just started raining here. Good for you. Um, 65 degrees in Abilene, 70 in hundreds of rain. And I'm kind of looking around my cradle because I need a different cradle. I just haven't bought one. Not in New York. It was 91 today. That's what it was all last week and before. I mean, it was 100 degrees uh, just, what was it, Friday or something? I don't recall. Anyways, it's insane hot. But it's typical for this time of year for our country. Anyway, out here in the middle of the heartland, off and on rain, about 50 hundreds for Vaughn. Excellent. Well done. Nice, nicely done. Cool. Cool. All right. So I've been, uh, I, can't, I daydream about a million things. So you're just going to have to forgive me as I kind of explain this idea I've had and you tell me what you think of it. Um, I've been wondering what if I did I, maybe like one or two t-shirts on demand as prizes for guys that do something where they either make a video and then, or uh, I don't know, I haven't decided how I want to do this. I kind of have something where I want to make a cool t-shirt where it says no secrets or something like that. Um, I don't know. I'm probably not going to do it, but who knows. <laughs> Just been thinking it'd be kind of cool. Um, let me see here. We have Alan in the house. Hello, Alan. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm thinking the idea I have is this guy uh, named Pat Flynn. He's a marketing dude that I follow, and he has a, a session called Ask Pat. And then if you make it on the Ask Pat show, he you get a free T-shirt with it's kind of a cool looking shirt. Uh, but I was wondering how I could do that for my thing that I'm doing here. I don't mind paying for them. That's not a big deal. I just, what do you do and how do you keep it simple? That's the question. And then add value. I don't want to give it away without adding value to the rest of the group and the rest of what I'm doing here. I want to make sure we add value. Gerald uh, Crichton says, 30 degrees, 32 degrees in Pinedale, Wyoming. Wow, cool. And Jacob, what's up, Eric? Well, <laughs> Rockin' HTV, Jacob. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Pinedale, I don't know where my son was, Gerald, but my son was cutting wheat up in Wyoming this summer. 
He was with uh, Larson Harvesting out of Waterville, Kansas, and cut some Coors Barley in Wyoming. That was kind of fun. Jimmy Myers is in the house. Hey, Jimmy, good to see you. So if you have questions, doesn't matter what kind of questions they are, um, the, the little lesson that I have here for you is not going to take very long, and then the rest of the time will be on open Q&A, ask me anything. So be thinking about what you want to ask here in a little bit. So, and he says, hey, brother. Well, hey, brother, back to you, Jimmy. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Okay, so it is 8.30 here in Dodge City, Kansas, and we will kick off our show. Hey, everyone, it is Eric with Rockin' HTV, Session 38. Tonight, we're going to work on a four-door Louisville uh, project that I'm working on. And it's, again, just another one to show you how you can make a cool-looking four-door uh, with a bit of a retro look. These are from Top Shelf Replicas, and, they're, and I think they're just cool. They're a bargain. Golly, I mean, you can't make a, a cheaper four-door, really. I mean, it's just, they're a bargain, they're easy, and they're fun. A good, good be beginner project if you wanted to do uh, marrying two cabs together. So we're going to put a little bit more work on this. I started this on Sunday as an impromptu video because I needed to move this along, and I thought, well, I'm going to show you guys how to do it while we're at it. And then we'll cap off the evening, our time together, with open Q&A, Ask Me Anything, I have my computer here, so if we need to go find some links to resources or some place to buy something, I can actually just I can go out here, type it, and post it in the comments, and you'll have that straight away. So that'll be cool. All right. So not to dilly-dally around, I'm going to flip the camera around. We'll go for a short ride, and we'll put. I'm going to explain what I've done and where we're at in the project, and then we'll we're going to be buying body filler on this project. Okay. Excuse me. Here we go. Okay, what we have here is the two top shelf replicas, L9000 Fords, or Louisville's as some folks like to call them. I think it's cooler when you call it Louisville. And um, on Sunday, what we did here was, on Sunday, I demonstrated where to cut this front cab. You cut the back of the front cab out, and then you cut out the firewall on the rear cab. And then we did some cleaning on, the, we just finished up these lines to make them all neat and true on both sides. So you had a really nice joint to uh, put together. Then we took some glue like this, just it was temporary glue. We put this on a nice level uh, piece of aluminum that I have here, a vise actually. And we just temporarily glued them together. And then as you and then we took um, electrical tape and we wrapped it around this cab. And then we put JB Weld, mixed up some JB Weld, and as you can tell, made a huge mess of it inside here, but nevertheless, we can clean that out with a rotary tool. We also put some in this joint so it's nice and solid on both sides, all the way around, and then monkeyed up in here trying to get some holes in the top of the cab filled in. Then we came out here, put some JB Weld, filled in a couple holes here and here, and then, uh, when you guys weren't watching, I did take the tape off yesterday as it dry, once it was dry. Or actually, I think it was this morning I did that. Took this tape off, and you can see why this works. Okay, one, see that tape provides a nice little wall so you get a nice smooth layer of JB Weld right here. All this is going to do for you guys is reduce work. This, when you... Put your tape on the outside, your JB Weld on the inside, it just reduces work because you have a nice smooth joint here where you can come in and sand and clean up these lines right here and, and then make it all level and it's just going to be a lot, lot easier. And I'm going to use a Dremel rotary tool uh, with a rotary sanding pad to clean this up. Okay. And normally, I wouldn't be doing what we're doing tonight at this moment, but I didn't get JB Weld to sploosh out of this crack here, so I got a nice big gap that I want to fill in before I go in and do my first initial sand. So that's the reason for that. And then in addition to that, 
this seam here was too tight and the JB Weld obviously did not cover up that seam. So I'm going to cover that up with body filler and then again on the same, on the passenger side right here. And I'm also going to cover up that little hole with body filler. Okay. And then, and the nice thing about this body filler is it does sand really easy so you can get in here and not have to worry about sanding and mucking up all your detail with these lines. You will notice I did take my X-Acto knife in here and I did go through and I just kind of cut out the JB Weld that was stuck in this door line here. Didn't have to do that, but uh, while I was waiting to kick off the show, I thought I'm going to do that. So I did that on both sides, a line here, there's a line, and it just gives your model more definition and just keeps everything pretty. Okay, we're also going to come in here, we're going to cover up these holes because we don't need rear view mirrors on the rear part of the cab. I'm going to cover those up. We're leaving the front ones, obviously. We need rear view mirrors up there, and we'll do that on both sides. So that's what we're up to on the Louisville. Okay. Again, I think I paid $25 shipped for both of these. Um, I know I bought a case of these this summer for 20 bucks. I bought them for 20 bucks a piece. And then, uh, oh, I sold a few of them and burned a few of them up on different things. But you can still get these pretty darn cheap. And um, yeah, yeah. About the only thing that would make this even cheaper, not as easy, but cheaper, you could go out and get you a couple Greenlight Internationals. Uh, I think they're $14 or less. I don't even know what they cost, but I know the Greenlight Internationals are they're like wreckers and whatnot. You could make one a four-door out of those. The only problem is this is just a really simple cab to work on. Okay. But if you want to know how to do a different type of cab that might be a bit more challenging, like an international, like a Freightliner, there are videos at a Ruck and HTV to show you how to do those. But like I said. Just a little bit more challenging. Okay, we are using Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. I buy this at my local hardware store, just right up the street from me. You can buy this anywhere online, anywhere in town. I mean, if you live in any size town, you should be able to find it at an auto parts store. There's another product I like to use in addition to Bondo, uh, but it's, I just didn't want to break that out tonight. I mean, this stuff is really, really simple to use and I'm using way too much here but as I've mentioned in the past this stuff is just easy to easy to work with so if you screw it up and you fill in the lines like I'm doing it's gonna come out so simple okay and we have a comment by Nathan he says a Road Champs makes a four-door IH fire truck, about 10 bucks. That's exactly right, Nathan. Thank you for bringing that up. If you want to skip this whole business with marrying two cabs together and just get you an easy four-door, get you a Road Champs. As Nathan pointed out, they are simple to work with. You can leave the light bar from the emergency vehicle on it, or you can... Put a little piece of tape over the gaping hole and fill it in with JB Weld on the inside. And boom, you got yourself a smooth cab IH four door. And they do fit on a variety of frames. Okay, and we have some other comments. Let me see here. We have Mark says, Man, you rock. Thanks for your awesome. Sight and awesome tips. You are welcome, Mark. Thank you for tuning in. Wouldn't be worth it without you here. And Ward says, Permatex makes a metal filler that works well, too. Excellent. Well done, Ward. Thank you for the tip. And John Hayes says, hello, hello, John. Thank you for being here on Rockin' HTV. Okay. So I'm just coming in here. Again, making a mess. But you know what? This stuff is simple to work with, so we're not get, I'm not getting uptight about getting this everywhere I don't want it. I'm just not going to do it.
So as you can see here, I'm just getting it everywhere. I've even had some luck using this stuff. Um, I'm not going to claim it's water soluble, but I have had good luck using lacquer thinner on a rag just to wipe it down and it'll remove some of this stuff too. Come on. Okay, John asks, hi, how are you? Well, John, I am doing awesome, even better now that we got a little rain here in Dodge City, Kansas, and it is not so dadgum dry. Holy cow, it was awful. It's been awful for a long time. Awful dry, anyway. Other than that, it's been pretty darn good. Okay. Okay, like I said, just making a mess. I'm filling up all these holes here from air horns on the back cab. Again, this stuff, it is just so simple to work with. Um, I don't care about getting it all over the stinking place. Okay, so as you can tell, guys, um, I've made a mess, but it's okay. It's okay. All right. And that's pretty much all I'm doing to this thing tonight. That's it. So I gotta let this dry before I can sand it. Okay. Um, Ward says, depending on temp and humidity, a couple hours to overnight. You're exactly right, Ward. He is spot on. Um, if it's, you know, pretty warm outside, um, this stuff's gonna be sandable in a very short time. Or if you let it out in the sun, just to get all happy. Um, yeah, it's totally going to dry on you, and you can sand it quickly. And it's cold, so this stuff won't be dry until the morning right now. So this is what we've got here. Um, let me see here. I think I missed one by Dustin. says, can I use two Peterbilt cabs to put together? Okay. That is a great segue into part two of tonight's show. Um, we are going to do our open Q&A beginning now. Um, and if you have any questions about the four-door, don't be afraid to ask there. Um, but uh, let me see, where's he at? Dustin Barnes. Okay. Can I use two Peterbilt cabs uh, to put together? So in the live part of the Q&A, this is exactly what you need to be asking, okay? So Dustin's got a great question. If you give me like two seconds, I'm going to go get a parts bin and show you a couple things. Hang on. Okay, I haven't done a Peterbilt. I've done freight. Uh, I've done a Kenworth. Um, okay, just a second. I'm gonna go get my Kenworth just for luck. This is my now dusty Kenworth four door W900L. This is DCP die cast all the way through. Um, you can see here. Okay, so you can do it, but here's the trick. Okay, and your Kenworth and your Peterbilt are going to be the same way. So will um, an 8600IH and a um, Freightliner, a, a, a M2 Freightliner, M2 Freightliner by Speccast. Okay, this is what's important about this. This is what makes these more challenging. Okay, here you go. You can see... From the top of this thing, it is narrower up here than it is back there, okay? Not a huge problem, but let me see if I got a second one in here. I don't think I do. I don't. Okay. Okay, it's not impossible, but what's going to happen is you're going to have to take the top of your... Okay, so if this was the rear cab, the rear one, okay, this is the rear cab, and then you're going to have another one up front, okay? You got to cut the firewall out. Well, I mean, do you have to cut the firewall out? Nah, you don't technically have to do that. I do it just to make it look like a real one so you have a walking space in between the two sets of seats. Okay. All right. You're going to shave some of this off 
okay? So you get the right amount of space between the front and back cabs, okay? So you're gonna sand this down, these fairings are gonna come off, and then what you're gonna have to do is, you have to actually, you do have to cut the firewall out. You're gonna have to cut the firewall out, okay? Then you're gonna have to cut the top of the cab uh, somewhere, I mean, just so the blade goes on the inside of of, of the door jam and, and you know the door frame and all that. So you're gonna have to cut here and then cut along this line, okay? You have to do that on both sides because you're then going to have to take these doors and then spread them out so they match up, match up to the back of the front cab. Tongue twister, I know. So you'll have to make the cuts in the frame, bend them out a little bit, and then you can marry them together. Now, you're not done yet, right? I haven't actually done a Peterbilt. I should do a Peterbilt just to see if I can do it. Um, on a Peterbilt, it's going to be just a, just a wee bit more challenging. You're, you're also going to have to cut your, your uh, cab cap. You're going to have to cut a line in it as well. So these outside edges can be spread apart to match the top of the cab. Does that make sense? I hope so. You could probably, if, if you had a factory cab that hadn't been molested like this one, okay, hadn't been molested, um, you could leave the cab top riveted to the base, okay? Leave your cab top riveted to the base and then go ahead and take your Dremel or rotary or whatever tool and make your cut from front to back, okay? And then you can widen it all together and then marry it up to the back of the front cab, okay? Now, you're not quite done yet. <laughs> you'll notice, you'll notice um, that this, sorry, you can see how this tapers off here in front? Okay, you're going to have to come in here and shave all of your lights off, whatever roof you're using. And then you may, I'm not going to say for sure because I haven't done a peat, you may have to take this part and just raise it up to again match the back of the cab. Okay, then you got to tape it, or excuse me, glue it temporarily, um, use your tape around this thing and then use your JB Weld or whatever bonding material you want to use uh, on the inside and then get ready to sand the snot out of it, okay? You're going to be spending, excuse me, some time sanding uh, to get all the lines and everything cleaned up. Not impossible. Absolutely not impossible. I did it with a Kenworth. If I can do this with a Kenworth, you can do it with a Peterbilt. It's just going to take a little more work. Um, it, well, more work, it's just going to take work. Okay, that's it. So that is a freaking great question. That is an amazing question. Let me grab another four-door quick for you. Um, where's my, aha. Okay, here's two four-doors for you. This is an M2 Freightliner by Speccast. Uh, this one's not as my best work. I did this one like um, after I did a couple of others. Huh, look at that, I missed some detail. Anyway, um, again, this one, um, not quite as tricky as the Peterbilt because the cab is much more square than the Pete or the Freightliner, or excuse me, the Pete or the Kenworth, okay? So it's a bit more square, um, but I think, if I recall right, I did have to raise the top of the hood. I know I had to cut I'm not going to say because I just don't recall. It's been a couple years since I did this one. Okay. This one's not bad. And again, um, and then this is and just a good old Ertl. And this one, the beautiful thing about this Ertl was, just like this um, L9000, 
the Ertl and the L9000 both. Um, and let me grab just a minute. And the Speccast IH 4300. These are square cabs. So you're basically cutting out firewall, back of the cab on all of these. This one, this one, and this one. And you really are going to just clean up some lines, temporarily glue, temporarily glue them together, wrap tape, glue, or, and, and JB Weld, and, and you're off and running. I mean, out of all of the ones you could do, if you wanted just any four-door, you have several options. You're going to, one, you can go get you a fire truck or something, an international fire truck by Road Champs. And I did one of those. Actually, I have one up here. I had to go show that to you, too. Um, a Road Champs fire truck, you could do that. And then, depending on your skill level and how much time and confidence you have, I would recommend either um, you go with a Speccast L9000. If you want to go on the cheap, do an Ertl, buy a couple of these kids these cabs out of a kid's uh, toy box for five bucks or whatever. Um, the IH4300, again, depending on where you're shopping, you can buy these at a bargain. Um, this um, Freightliner, L, uh, Freightliner M2, uh, harder to find, but really not a bad truck to work on. Um, and stay with me, guys. A couple more options. Okay. Aha. I found it. I found I found two more. <laughs> I kind of get off on these. Okay. This is a Speccast IH8600. Okay. Okay. Um, again. Not impossible to do, not a bad cab to work on, it's kind of fun. And then I had mentioned the Road Champs. Okay, I, I didn't realize I had two of these. Okay, so here is a Road Champs. I think I picked this up for a few dollars on eBay. This is what it looks like off the frame. You'll notice it's got this light bar. You can leave it or you can get rid of it. Um, super simple, look at that, already made. All you're gonna do is just put this on a on a on a frame. I mean, strip it down if you want to strip it down or don't. Um, you know, uh, here is another cab. Okay, same cab, but look at this. No light bar. Ta-da. Okay, so this one and this one are exact same cabs, except look inside. Notice the JB Weld right here. Okay, so this is four-door mania tonight. Holy cow. And then, um, man, they are simple, simple to use, these uh, road champs here. And I thank you, uh, um, was it not Dylan, so, uh, for, it escapes me, who brought up the uh, road champs. What I'm going to do here is just I'm going to line these up so you can kind of see first hand how they all behave and look together okay so okay let me see if I can do this alright I'm gonna go ahead and you're gonna go for a ride guys real quick and then we'll get off the whole four door business so we can answer other questions okay so we have here no, they don't all fit in the photo. Well, that's okay. Make them fit. There we go. That's kind of sort of good, right? So here we have the um, M2 Freightliner W900L Kenworth 8600 Speccast IH. We have the um, S-Series Ertl IH. We have the Top Shelf Replicas 4300 Top Shelf Replicas um, Louisville, and then we have the Road Champs International. And I forget what model number the Road Champs is. But there you go, guys. You have, that's, this is like four-door heaven. 
guess I forgot I had all these. All right. Well, some of them anyway. Okay. All right. Um, I've also done a Speccast 385 four door. Uh, you can see pictures of that online um, someplace. I did one of those. Turned out really cool. Not hard to work on. Pretty. Easy. And it just turned out cool. It was awesome. It was fun. I would do one of those again if for a video series or something if a guy wanted to see him. Okay. All right. I'm done with four doors. Does that answer your question, Dustin? I hope so. Uh, if you have any more questions after the show, please, please, please um, let me know. Okay. Uh, Vaughn says, that would be cool. We have Nathan Durbin says, I'll stick to buying Road Champ sites. I don't blame you, man. I don't blame you at all. Not at all. Okay. Ward says, I tried to Pete. It turned out meh. That was two years ago. Uh, hello, Clint. We got uh, Jimmy. Could you not put one of them to a Pete or Kenworth in the back and bond them together? Could you not put one of them to a Pete? I'm not sure what exactly you mean there, but that's okay. Um, Dustin Barnes says, okay, I love watching your video show. Thank you. I appreciate that. And Ward says, remember, most Pete's don't have a cabin. That's true, Ward. Well done. Thanks for pointing that out. And I think that one I had over here actually was like that. Anyway, um, all right. Um, we, uh, okay, it is time for more questions. What else can I, oh, that's right. Uh, Nathan is, um, he said, didn't I do a Volvo? I did. I did one of, Vol I did a Volvo. Um, that was kind of a booger to do because it had weird lines and all sorts of, ah, bleh. um, yeah, I, I do. I did it. I did a Volvo, Volvo and, uh, yeah. Um, and, and the reason I did it, I got the cabs for virtually nothing. It was like, well, let's just see if we can do this. And I did it. Yeah. Okay, Ward asks, do you have one of the new Pete hinging bumpers? I I don't have one um I don't have one loose. I have one on a truck. Okay. Yes, I do have a Pete hinging bumper. Here we go. Um, here it is. This is a 389 with the new hinging bumper on it. There it is. And the hood sticks. So, there you go. That's what it is. Um, to install these, what you'll have to do is, um, these hinge points right here on the bumper are just a skosh narrow. They're just a hair bit narrow. So what I did was I took a piece of rod and actually I used a leftover DCP uh, Wilson tarp rod and you can't see it in the light very well but I drilled with a 16th inch bit all the way through this die cast here that holds the hood pins in and then I used that rod through the bumper, the hood and the die cast wasn't terribly difficult to work. I did bust a few of those hinge points, but with this glue right here, it glued right back on and hasn't been a problem since. I know I busted one on that one. Okay, Jimmy says, uh, could you bond a wide body cab in the back of a Pete or Kenworth? I don't know why not. I haven't done it, but you could. All right. Okay, let me see here. We are looking for uh, questions. Okay, Q&A time. Oh my gosh, it's already 8.58. Now burned up all that time on the, on the four-door. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Um, what bed did you put on the red Chevy you did over the weekend? Length also, please. Clint, I will grab that right here. Um, actually, I did two beds this weekend. Here it is. This is a, what I call a KN, nap hide, nappy, however you say it. This is a KN 18, so this is an 18 foot bed. Okay, and this is measuring three and not a half. Um, um, just a second. 
Oh, it is. I'm sorry. Three and a half inches. Three and a half inches here. So, so you can't see that very well, but it's three and a half inches. Okay. And then it's an inch and a half wide. It is almost, in my opinion, almost a bit big for this particular cab. But, um, you know, it's, it's what we have. I mean, it's the best looking C65 you're going to buy, period, right now. So, that's what we got. And I recommend them. Okay. Um, oh, here's another one. This is a KN22, um, and this is going on a, a GMC Brigadier when I get... Let me just show you quick. This will be behind that right there. That's a GMC Brigadier um, that I bought off eBay for 20 bucks or something. And I can't find any more of these. It sucks. Stinks. So this is a, and this is a little different yet. This is a KN22 high side. This is a KN18 low side and right there. These beds back in the day came with a foot long extension you could order as an option. And that's what we had printed up here is just that extra little bit. Frankly, I think these on these smaller cabs looks better, but because this is 1 60th scale, it's a slightly bigger than 1 64th, it looks pretty freaking cool right there. So that's what we got cooking there. Nathan asks, what 3D projects have you got in the works? Well, let me see here. I am working on, I've got to get a, my Crustbuster drill modified a little bit. I gotta figure out how to get that thing cheaper than expensive. Uh, I haven't figured that out, but working on it. Um, that's really the only thing I have at this moment. If I can't find, it, well, you can buy these in resin, and uh, that's an option. But I'm looking for more diecast versions of that. Okay, let me see. Where can I get a cattle guard like that? Um, All right, um, you can buy the herd bumper, is what it is, but I don't call it a herd bumper to stay out of trouble. Um, you can buy this bumper with the hinge points just like this out of my Shapeway store. Um, there are others out there that don't have the hinge points. So you can buy this in my Shapeway store today. And then there's several others in there. I do offer a Kenworth herd bumper now, but it is static. All it does is it just marries up to, uh, you just glue it to the existing bumper. So, okay, um, Steve Thompson says, and, and the rest of them, the only one that operates is the Peterbilt. The rest of them are all static. They don't, well, I take that back. I take that back. Um, I haven't done a video on it, but you can buy one, a herd bumper for a International Pro Star, and you can make it work. And it actually works freaking cool. Uh, it's not difficult really, um, but I need to do a video on that. I haven't done it yet. Steve Thompson says, do you just work in 164th? Yes, that's really my only interest. I do have on my bucket list to make a brass combine trailer for my 132nd scale L2 combine that I got when I was that big, that big. Uh, I have harvested a gazillion acres with it. And I want to put it on a combine trailer in 132nd scale and then put a truck in front of it just because it'd be freaking cool. And then I want to put the header in the back of the truck. That's what I want to do. Um, Ward says, Hinge K Dump, your bumper is in the works. That's true. And I could even tell you who's building that. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and be looking for it. It will be out soon. Or soon? It'll just be out. How do you like that? Okay, guys, we have actually run a little bit over time. I try to respect your time because uh, I am grateful for your gift of uh, time watching these shows. So I appreciate that. So all I'm going to ask you to do is if you haven't subscribed for live notifications, you can do that right after I end this show. You can hit the little button. So anytime I go live, you'll see it. You'll get a notification. That'll be awesome. And then second, 
If you know someone that is struggling in the model world, in the diecast world, whatever, I I really wanted to make a difference in the model world just by getting this stuff in the hands of people that can use it. And you can be a blessing to somebody else by either A, teaching them what you've learned from me or from someone else, or B, share the resources that I've created with them. So you can do that and that will let everyone get the awesome models that they want. All right? And we all win. How do you like that? Okay. Next week, we'll have a new show, 39. We're trucking up to a year's worth of shows coming up. So I will look forward to seeing you next Monday right here at Rockin' HTV. You guys, thank you for your attention, and I appreciate it. We will catch you later. Good night, guys.